So good morning everyone. So uh, now we will be moving on to the next topic that is uh, external field uh, induced membrane based separation processes. In fact, these types of separation processes are very important when you are talking about the uh, filtration of colloids. Okay? And these colloids are basically charged molecules and there are number of phenomena that will be occurring due to uh, during the filtration of the colloid molecules for uh, because these colloids are the charged. So therefore, a intermolecular uh, forces, uh, elect electrostatic forces, long range, short range with the, um, uh, um, uh, with, with the membrane surface between the molecules themselves and things like that. Now, when the, there are some uh, fundamental aspects of uh, various colloid, um, uh, uh, colloid, colloidal particles and uh, therefore, if you have an external electric field present in the system, there are certain uh, changes that will occur. Now, if you have a charged surface and it is uh, and if you have two charged surfaces and if there is a relative velocity between these charged surfaces, there are several phenomena that those, those will be occurring at a time. These phenomena in a group are called electrokinetic effects. So, let us look into the fundamentals of uh, various colloid uh, separation processes. Fundamentals of various processes. Okay. So, the first one, the first effect of the charge colloids are called electrokinetic effects. What are the electrokinetic effects? If you have a charged surface, if a charged surface has relative velocity past a second surface or phase, the charged surface or charged phase past a second uh, surface or phase, then number of phenomena numbers of phenomena occur and they are grouped as they are known as electrokinetic effects. Okay. So, so what is, what is the uh, uh, basically the definition of electrokinetic effects? If you have a charged surface or phase and the, it, it moves past another phase, okay. then there are a number of such phenomena th th those will occur and all of them are grouped and called electro and, uh, and grouped under the category of electrokinetic effect. Now, let us look into the origin of electrokinetic effect. Now, if you suppose we, ha we are having two phases, this is phase number 1 and this is phase number 2 and these two phases are uh, um, uh, it will be having the um, uh, suppose there are positive charges. That means, if we have an interface for example, if we have a positively charged surface placed into an electrolytic solution. Electrolytic solution means you, you will be having a sodium chloride solution basically. A 1 is to 1 electrolyte is sodium chloride solution, electrolytic solution for example, NaCl. Okay. This is 1 is to 1 electrolyte. That means, both of the uh, species ionic species sodium and chloride they will be having valency 1. Okay. Now, if you, if you place a positively charged surface in an electrolyte solutions, now, negatively charged particles or negative charges will accumulate on the interface. Okay. So, uh, why they will be accumulate? Because of the electrostatic attraction forces. So, now, if a positively charged 
charged surface is placed in an electrolytic solution negative charges accumulate on the interface okay that is the first manifestation of putting a positively charged surface in an electrolytic solution and what is the second manifestation the second manifestation is that the concentration so therefore the concentration of negatively charged particles or ions will be maximum at the interface and second manifestation will be that the concentration of negatively charged particles reduces if one moves away from the surface. Okay. And what happens in the bulk? In the bulk, electro neutrality will be maintained. Is maintained the first one. Secondly, concentration of positively charged particles and negatively charged particles will be equal if you have a 1 is to 1 electrolyte. For 1 is to 1 electrolyte concentration of both ionic species becomes equal and the uh, if the bulk of the solution becomes electro neutral. Now, uh, in the bulk in the bulk electrostatic potential is taken as 0. electrostatic potential is taken as 0. And what is the bulk? Bulk is situated at a distance uh, between 5 to 10 nanometer from the surface. Location of the bulk location of the bulk is typically five to twenty nanometer from the charged surface. 5 to 200 nanometer from the charged surface and what, what will dictate uh, this distance? This distance is dictated, it is influenced by the concentration of electrolyte solution whether it is 0 0.1 molar or it is a 1 molar sodium chloride solution that will dictate this distance where the rearrangement of uh, arrangement or distribution of the charges near the interface will occur. So, now we will come to the definition of electric double layer or EDL. Definition of electric double layer is now the arrangement or distribution of charges from the interface to the bulk is known as 
electric double layer and typically the electric double layer thickness will be 5 to 200 nanometer based on the concentration of the electrolyte that you are having. So, what is electrical double layer EDL? EDL is basically, so, so whenever you will be placing a charged surface in an electrolytic solution, there will be a redistribution of the charges um, uh, between the interface and the bulk of the solution. This particular zone will be having a typical thickness of 5 to 200 nanometer based on the th concentration of the electrolyte. That particular layer is known as the or region is known as the electric double layer. Okay. Now, let us look into the various categories of electrokinetic effects. Okay. Typically, there are four categories of electrokinetic effects. One is electrophoresis. Second is electroosmosis, third is streaming potential, fourth one is sedimentation potential. There are four of them are present electrophoresis, electroosmosis, streaming potential, sedimentation, sedimentation potential depending on the situation. Now, we will look into the uh, definition of each and every category and see what are the difference and what are the various manifestations and what are the conditions to uh, establish one of these electrokinetic effects uh, being present in your system. Okay. So, first one is electrophoresis. If one phase is li uh, liquid or gas, is liquid or gas in which the second phase is suspended as solid or liquid then particles means the solid particles if it is a that means if you are talking about, about the second phase as solid particles if the first phase is liquid you are talking about the about the liquid droplets if the of the in the second phase if the first phase is gas so the combination is liquid solid the two phases or gas liquid then particles these particles means either solid particles if the phase one is liquid or liquid droplets if the phase one is gas then particles can be induced to move by applying an external electric field. This phenomena is known as electrophoresis. This simply means if you have a liquid stream, for example, if you have aqueous solution with uh, uh, electrolytic, aqua, if you have an aqueous solution and if you have charged particles, for example, protein, etcetera. Now, if you apply an external electric field, then these charged particles will move from one end to the other. This phenomena is known as the electrophoresis and you can measure the velocity of electrophoresis. velocity of particles can be measured under 
various electric field strength. That means, you, you, you track a particle and, and see how much distance it has covered per, some, uh, per unit time under an external electric field let us say E 1 and you can increase the electric field to E 2 and can measure the particle velocity. This velocity is known as the electrophoretic velocity. What this electrophoretic, electrophoretic velocity infer or gives you information? It gives information about the net charge on the particle or potential on its surface. So, electrophoretic measure velocity can lead to, can give you information about the net charge residing on the particle or the net surface potential it will be having. So, so that is important because in under some calculations you, you will, will see later on that the what is the net charge on the particle or its surface potential are important in some subsequent calculations there you need to uh, measure the electrophoretic velocity and therefore, electrophoresis is required. Next phenomena is known as electro osmosis. Now, what is electro osmosis? Osmosis in this case the solid remains stationary. In this case the solid surface is stationary. and the liquid moves under and under influence of an external electric field. So, there is a difference between the electrophoresis and electroosmosis. In electrophoresis, the solid particles used to move in the liquid stream under the presence of external electric field. In this case, the liquid stream moves in presence of uh, when the solid surface is stationary under the influence of an external electric field. So, when, it, when this can occur, it occurs uh, when a capillary or porous plug is filled up with an electrolytic solution. That means, you are having a porous plug or capillary, okay, a, a capillary where let us say it is a very small capillary with the surfaces are charged okay? and you are having an electrolytic solution here, it is filled up with electrolytic solution. solution. Now, if you apply an external electric field okay, of let us say voltage V and strength E okay, and, and the, and, uh, the um, relation between E and V is nothing but E times D is equal to V, where D is the distance between the two, two of, the, of, the, of this channel. Okay. Now, if you have an electrolytic solution kept in the porous plug, electrolytic solution means they are containing free charges like sodium chloride solution they are containing free charges. Now, if I apply an external electric field, the charged particles will move from one end to the other. In the in response to the external electric field the charged particles will move and they will drag the liquid along with them causing the flow of the liquid. So, this is known as electro osmosis. So, in presence of external electric field
free charges of electrolytes electrolyte solution move and they drag the liquids along with them resulting into a motion of liquid movement of liquid this is known as this phenomena is known as electro for electro osmosis now one can measure the uh, uh, volumetric flow rate one can measure volumetric flow rate of liquid per unit current or external field electric field strength so we can measure the volumetric flow rate or electrosmotic flow rate of the liquid per unit current or per unit external field strength this will give me an information information about the surface charge density or surface potential of the solid phase. So, once you measure the electro osmotic volumetric flow rate that gives the information about the wall, wall surface potential of the solid capillary charged capillary or the surface charge electric charge density um, of the capillary. So, one can get an information about the how much potential uh, surface potential of the capillary or how, what is the net amount of charge charge density that means charge per unit square meter of surface is present on that. So, if you are talking about nano filtration membranes where the membranes are basically charged and by this method by, by measuring the electro osmotic flow rate one can measure the net potential of the, um, of, of the capillaries or the pores. Okay. So, now one can do the during the fabrication of the membrane or the casting of the membrane one can change the operating condition suitably and can, can monitor or, or can, um, can have suitable electric charge. Okay, and, uh, and, and and can can have the desired properties regarding the retention of a particular type of solute and things like that. So electroosmosis is very important as far as the membrane filtration is concerned. Next electrokinetic phenomena that we will be studying is the streaming potential. Okay. In streaming potential, now we are in this case we will not be applying any external electric field, we will be applying a, an external pressure. So, here also the electro light solution fills up the solid capillary. And in this case, we are not applying, it is just as a reverse of electro osmosis, we are not applying an external electric field, we are applying apply an delta P, apply a pressure gradient. Okay. We are not using an external electric field, we are applying a pressure gradient. Let us see what happens. Uh, there will be excess charges present, right. If you have a solid surface or solid capillary that will be uh, fixed filled, filled up with the electrolytic solution, the capillary surface inner surface will be charged. So, counter charges will be counter ions from the electrolytic solution will be concentrated on the um, uh, close to the surface forming the electric double layer. 
beyond the electric double layer, the surface uh, the, the, the ions are free. Now, when you apply a, 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 an external pressure gradient, the excess charges this will lead to transport of transport of excess charges near the wall by the liquid movement by the liquid because you are, you are you are applying a pressure gradient means the liquids will move and in the meantime when they will move they will take the excess charges along with them and this will lead to leads to accumulation of charges in the downstream of the ch of the channel or of the of the capillary tube so when the excess charges will be present in a system that will cause a development of electric field so this will develop an electric field that drives the electric current against the flow direction. So, accumulation, so, so the excess charges will be carried over by the flow of the fluid that is generated by the delta p or pressure gradient and the excess charges will be, will, will be accumulated in the downstream of the tube forming a development build up of electric field that will cause an electric current flow against the uh, uh, flow direction and, and soon a steady state is, is reached, a steady state is reached and at the steady state the potential difference across the capillary is measured and this potential difference is defined as streaming potential. Now, why will you measure the streaming potential? The streaming potential will give you an information about the surface potential of the charged wall. It can give the surface potential or it, it can give the electric charge density that means charge in coulomb per meter square of the wall. Now, both electro osmosis and streaming potential measurement will give the information about the electric potential of the charged wall or charged density of the charged wall. But what is the difference between the two? In one case we are applying an external in, in both the cases we are putting an electrolytic solution in an in, in a charged uh, in, in a capillary tube where the walls are charged. In both the cases the liquid is moving and the solid surface is stationary. But in the case of electro osmosis we are applying an external electric field in the case of streaming potential we are applying an external pressure difference. So, in case of electro osmosis we are using applying external electric field in case of streaming potential
we are applying external pressure gradient. How will you physically you know um, realize these two situations? So, that means, the electric circuit is complete or it is closed in case of electro osmosis and electric circuit is open in case of streaming potential. That means, if you have a channel or, or, or a tube the, where the walls are you know por, um, charged and it is filled up with electrolytic solution. Now, this is the case of electro osmosis you are applying an external electric field that means, both the two ends are basically connected to two different poles of a battery. Okay. So, this is the case of electro osmosis, where the circuit is closed, we are talking about a closed circuit. On the other hand, the situation is identical as far as the uh, physical uh, system is concerned that we, are, we will be having an electrolytic solution filled up in a porous plug and in this case the electric circuit is, is open and we are applying a pressure gradient. How will you apply a pressure gradient? Either using a small pump or you know um, uh, or, or you, you just make a difference in level of the two reservoirs. That means, the pressure here is rho g h 1 if this height is h 1 and this height is rho g h 2, if there is a pressure difference between the two. So, somehow you have to apply, you have to generate a pressure difference between the two ends, then the uh, system is known as the streaming potential and it is open circuit, because this circuit is not connected with the electric voltage source, external voltage source. So, it is open circuit. Okay. So, there is a difference between the electro osmosis and streaming potential. The next one we will be talking about the discussing next and the last one is sedimentation potential. Now, what is sedimentation potential? Suppose charged colloids when charged colloidal particles are allowed to settle through a fluid or let us say liquid under gravity or centrifugal field that means, this happens in centrifugation as well field a potential difference is generated okay, because the charged particles will be settling down. So, there will be uh, uh, there will be a difference in, uh, in uh, you know potential between the two between two points in the field a potential difference is generated, this potential difference is known as the sedimentation potential. One can measure the sedimentation potential and the measurement of the sedimentation potential gives you information. about charged density or surface potential of colloids. Okay. So, there are four, so all these four phenomena, uh, the electrophoresis, electro osmosis, streaming potential and sedimentation potential, they clubbed, they are grouped together under the category of electrokinetic phenomena. And these electrokinetic effects can be generated by uh, different, you know, physical situations 
and uh, based on that we, we will categorize them and uh, measurements of surface potential or something uh, or measurement of these various things like for example, it is a flow rate in case of electro osmosis, it is the velocity of the particle in case of electrophoresis, it is the sediment, it is the electric potential in case of streaming potential or sedimentation potential. Measurements of all these quantities will give you quantify the net charge density of the charged particles or the surface potential on them or the charge density or surface potential of the solid wall in case of streaming potential or and or electro osmosis. Now, next we talk about the surface of shear and jitter potential. Okay. What is surface of shear? Now, when uh, uh, during electro electrophoresis and let us talk about the electrophoresis. the particles, the, part, the charged particles may be spherical or cylindrical. Spherical, cylindrical or any other shape. Okay. When they move in the liquids, the surface of a shear, a shear is nothing but the imaginary surface where it is considered lying close to the solid surface. That means, during electrophoresis the charged particles move, right? charged particles move in the solution under external electric field. Okay. Now, there is a particular region For example, this is a, a this is a sphere, this is a positively charged sphere. Okay. Now, it is moving in the liquid stream and there is a surface around the solid sphere. Okay. Between this solid sphere, the viscosity is infinity. What do you mean by viscosity is infinity? That means, an external layer of the fluid will be always attaching on these charged particles and it will move along with it. Okay. This, so, there is no surface of shear and this is this surface, the external surface is called surface of shear. What do you mean by viscosity is infinity? Within this, within the surface of shear, the viscosity is infinity means it cannot move under the under external force. That means, this particular layer is permanently attached on the charged particle and moves along with it. Okay. The this particular the the, uh, the this particular layer is known as the stern layer. So, what is stern layer? Stern layer is when a charged particle moves in an electrolytic solution under the influence of an external electric field, a layer of fluid particles or an envelope of fluid particles of fluid particles always move along with it. this external layer is known as the stern layer. And the potential surface potential on the, the outside surface potential on this stern layer is known as the zeta potential. That means, this is the charged particle and you will be having 
an external layer mainly constituted by the counter ions that means negatively charged ions it is moving along with it and the potential on this outside. So, this layer this particular layer is known as the stern layer and the outside surface is known as the the, the potential on this outside surface is known as the zeta potential. So, the definition of zeta potential is the potential electric potential at the outer surface of stern layer. So, measurement of electrophoretic mobility will give you an idea of zeta potential, right. The electrophoretic mobility What is the definition of electrophoretic mobility? We have talked about the electrophoretic velocity. When you discussed about the electrophoresis, we talked about electrophoretic velocity and electrophoretic mobility is nothing but electrophoretic velocity per unit electric field strength. So, the mobility will be having a definition of electrophoretic velocity per unit external electric field strength. Electric field strength. So, what is the electro unit of velocity? It is meter per second and electric, electric field, uh, field strength will be having a unit uh, volt per unit per meter. So, it is volt per meter. So, it is it will be having a unit of meter square second inverse volt inverse. Okay? So, that is the unit of electrophoretic mobility. So, if you can measure the electrophoretic mobility that gives a clear cut idea about the uh, zeta potential. So, it gives information zeta potential and what is the significance of zeta potential? Significance of physical significance of zeta potential is that it is related to the stability of the colloidal solution directly related to the stability of colloidal solution. That means, if you have a colloidal solution the outside so suppose there are several particles having the having uh, more or less close zeta potential with, with the uh, similar charges. So, they will repel each other and that whole solution becomes stable. Now, if you add some coagulant from the outside that will form a, a negative uh, you know, negative charged co coagulant that will form um, complexes with the charged particles and these charged particles will be the, the whole complex will grow bigger in size as more colloids will be attached to it and therefore, whole thing will be settled down and the colloidal stability will be decreasing. So, if you would like to destabilize a colloidal solution you have to add the coagulant from outside that will give the uh, that will basically precipitate the whole it becomes neutral and it becomes uh, the uh, density becomes larger and higher and it becomes precipitated and the colloidal uh, solution will be destabilized. Okay. Next, so behavioral, so um, sedimentation behavior of the mineral ores uh, can be is one of the field sedimentation behavior of mineral ores. Okay. Processing of the mineral etcetera, the, the, the zeta potential will be really required. So, if the zeta potential is very high, the dose of coagulant must be very high, so that they will be precipitated, they will be added and it will be precipitated. So, the measurement of zeta potential has direct uh, implication regarding the stability of the colloidal solution. Okay. Next, we go some go for some quantification. The quantification is the first quantification is the concentration profile of ions. Concentration 
of ions in electrolytic solution in presence of a charged surface. So, that means, there is a electrolytic solution present here and you are putting a surface which is positively charged. So, the counter ions or the, so in the electrolytic solution let us say NaCl, so you will be having plenty amount of Na plus and Cl minus ions there and the negatively charged ions will be accumulating over this surface. They are called, so if, if, if the surface is positively charged, these negatively charged ions are called counter ions. If this surface is uh, positively charged, then positively charged uh, ions are called co-ions. On the other hand, if you if this surface is negatively charged, the negatively charged ions will be co-ions and positively charged ions will be counter ions. So, opposite charges are basically counter ions and, and similar charges are co-ions. So, the concentration of the counter ions will be maximum at the surface because more, will, more counter ions will be accumulated there and it will be decreasing exponential exponentially towards the bulk. Similarly, so therefore, this will be the typical concentration profile profile of counter ions. And this will be typical concentration profiles of co-ions. Ions. So, initially uh, near the surface the co-ion concentration will be, will be minimal and it will be increasing and at the bulk they will be equal means the overall neutrality will be maintained. Okay. We will be coming to that. So, x is the distance from the surface towards the bulk. This is a typical charge distribution in an electrolytic solution when a charged surface is immersed or inserted into the electrolytic solution. Let us see at infinity what happens when x tends to infinity. What is infinity? It is the bulk of the solution. And what is the bulk of the solution? Bulk of the solution means at infinite distance, the presence of the charged surface is not felt. Okay. That means, bulk of the solution does not experience the presence of charged surface in electrolytic solution. That means, electro, wh what does that mean? That means, there is no distribution of the charges okay, and electroneutrality will be maintained. is maintained. Now, these express these whatever we have just discussed now this whole thing can be described mathematically by a single equation. At x equal to infinity z plus n 0 plus plus z minus n 0 minus will be is equal to 0. That means, what is n 0 plus n 0 plus is the concentra is the number concentration, n is basically the number concentration. Number concentration means number of ions, number per unit meter cube of the solution, number of ions per unit volume of the solution that is the number concentration. From the molar concentration, you can get the number concentration because one mole contains Avogadro number of uh, material. Okay. So, from molar concentration, one can get easily the number concentration if you multiply it by Avogadro number. Okay. Then, liter and meter cube, there will be a factor of 1000. 
Okay, so either you can represent it as number per meter cube or number of ions per liter. Okay, so if it is uh, liter, then you need not to uh, multiply by a factor of thousand. If it is meter cube, you have to multiply by a factor of thousand. That is the conversion factor between the liter and meter cube. And what is Z plus? Z plus is the valency of the positively charged ions. And what is uh, N zero plus? N zero plus is the number concentration of positively charged ions. And what is Z minus? Z minus is the valency of the negatively charged ions and N0 minus is the number concentration of negatively charged ions. Now, if we are talking about a an electrolytic solution, so there, therefore, this equation can further be written, can be recursed as at x tends to infinity mod of Z plus N0 plus minus mo, mod of uh, uh, Z minus N0 minus is equal to 0. That means, if you are talking about um, NaCl solution, 1 is to 1 electrolyte, 1 is to 1 electrolyte, Z plus is 1, N0 plus multiplied by N0 plus minus Z minus, okay. the mod value of Z minus is 1, so minus of 1, so that, that means minus 1 is the uh, valency. N0 minus multiplied by N0 minus will be equal to 0. That means, N0 plus is equal to N0 minus. So, number concentration of positively charged ions and negatively charged ions are equal at the bulk of the solution where the electron utility will be maintained. That means, total amount of positive charge will be equal to total amount of negatively charged. But if you talk about 2 is to 1 electrolyte, for example, CaCl2. Okay. So, in CaCl2 that valency is Ca plus plus 2 plus and chloride will be minus. So, therefore, this will be uh, Z plus will be nothing but 2, 2 N 0 plus will be equal to N 0 minus. So, this is the relation uh, this will be the relation between the, uh, the, the uh, number of con number concentration of the ions in the bulk. Similarly, you can go for the 3 is to 1 electrolyte and so on and so forth. So, th this simply means the number of, uh, uh, of calcium ions will be number concentration will be less compared to the chloride ion and the total electronuclide will be maintained if you have uh, um, a CS, uh, 2 is to 1 electrolyte. Now, based on these uh, fundamentals, one can go for the uh, potential distribution within the electric double layer and one can find out the surface potential, the total potential distribution within the electric double layer and then we can get an expression of relationship between the surface potential and number concentration through the uh, movement of the ionic species, one is by the electric potential gradient, another is by the concentration gradient. So, it is a diffuse diffusion because of, of the presence of concentration gradient and it is electrophoretic uh, movement because of the present because due to the presence of external electric field. At the, st at the steady state, these two fluxes, the ion flux because of concentration difference and ion flux because of electric potential difference will be equal. That will give you a clear cut expression of surface potential of the, of the electric, electric potential at any point of the electric double layer as a function of uh, concentration of the electrolyte that we will see in the next class. Okay. Thank you very much.